Howdy folks, welcome to my channel and the beginning of my How To Mod Skyrim series featuring Dark Lady Lexi's Legacy of the Dragonborn. And the first thing we're going to do is to get organized. This is a very lengthy guide and the more organized we are, the better. And the first thing I like to do is to create a shortcut to the common folder of my Steam installation. So I have Steam installed on my C drive. So we go into Steam, Steam Apps and Common. It's right here. And we're going to create a shortcut by sending it to the desktop as a shortcut. And I'm just going to rename this as just Steam. We are going to create a folder in which we're going to install everything into. So everything's in one place. And I'm going to put that into my root directory of my C drive. And I'm going to call it Lexi's Legacy of the Dragon. Born. And let's go ahead and create a shortcut for that folder. Send it to desktop as a shortcut. Okay, now we're getting warmed up. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have a fresh install of Skyrim. So, if you have Skyrim Special Edition already installed, let's go ahead and uninstall that. So go into your Steam libraries, right click on Skyrim Special Edition, we go into Manage, and uninstall. Uninstall. Okay, but that's not it. After we have done that, we are going to go into the newly created shortcut. And we're going to delete Skyrim Special Edition folder from here. We're going to make sure every trace is gone. And then if you've been playing Skyrim, you'll have something in your Documents folder. So you would click Documents, My Games, and we want to uh, delete this folder as well. Skyrim Special Edition. Hey, what next? Well, we're going to reinstall Skyrim, of course. And everyone should know how to do that. Let's go into your Steam install. All right, now that we're nice and organized, let's actually start the guide. We are going to start with the prerequisites. Now, this quick word here is very important. Your game may appear broken and loot will not sort correctly until you complete the entire guide. If you add or remove other mods before completing the guide, if you do not carefully read and follow every word of the guide, do not deviate, trust the guide. If you are not willing to teach yourself how to use all of the modding tools used in the guide. What this basically boils down to is that Skyrim will not behave the way that we want it to until we complete this guide. If you try to do a test run too early, you'll find that Skyrim will be broken, if not just completely unstable. And if you try to run loot too early, you'll see that it won't sort the mods properly or correctly, if at all. Like through the process of uh, installing these mods, uh, you, you will be tempted to do like a test run. Like say you install a texture pack you're really ex excited about. So you launch the game and what happens? The game crashes and well, that's to be expected. So basically when in doubt, just trust a guide and just carry on. Everything will be all right. And also, if you've already been modding Skyrim for a while now, you probably have the handful of mods that are your favorites that you want to integrate into this uh, guide and you're going to be tempted to install them right away. But I advise you, don't do it. Don't you do it. I will show you later on, uh, much later in the guide on how to do that safely. And also, you might be tempted to remove mods that you see in this guide that you don't like. Once again, don't you do it. Don't do it. I will show you how to do it safely later on in the guide. So just trust the process, trust the guide, and just keep going. Okay, another thing that the quick word touches on are how the mod installations are gonna be treated. Many guides contain multiple parts to several downloads. These individual downloads should be handled according to the following guidelines unless otherwise specified. Files downloaded from the main file section should be installed as separate mods in Mod Organizer 2. Files downloaded from the updates and hotfixes sections should be merged with the parent mod in Mod Organizer 2. This is accomplished by entering the same name for the update file that you gave its parent, then selecting the merge option when prompted. If that sounds a little uh, complicated, don't worry. I got your back. I will show you exactly what you need to do. Okay, then files downloaded from the optional files and miscellaneous files section should be treated as main files and installed as separate mods in Mod Organizer 2. 
Once again, I will show you exactly how to do this. It is super easy. And next thing you know, it'll be just second nature and something you're not even thinking about while you're doing it. All right. Installing the official Bethesda content, Skyrim Special Edition. Hopefully you've already done that. All right, now we're gonna disable the Steam Overlay. The Steam Overlay is known to cause issues while playing Skyrim Special Edition, and you are advised to disable it. To do this, perform the following. The first option here is sort of like a nuclear option to basically just turn the Steam Overlay off for every single game that you have installed. And the second option is just disabling it specifically for Skyrim Special Edition. Now, we're gonna do this because they are advising us to do it, but truth be told, me personally, I've never had a problem with the Steam Overlay being enabled, but we're gonna follow it because that's what they're advising us to do. So we do that by going into Steam, right-clicking Skyrim Special Edition, go under Properties, and in general, you'll see the option here, Enable the Steam Overlay while in game. You're gonna wanna click that to disable it. Okay, now we're gonna update proof Skyrim. Bethesda regularly, roughly every three months, updates some of the base Skyrim files in support of their Creation Club content. That me this means that SKSE and a bunch of mods that use it will no longer function. And in order to prevent Steam from updating these files, it is required that you make the following selections. Go back into Steam. Uh, right click on Elder Scrolls Skyrim Special Edition and go to Properties. Then we're gonna go into Updates tab. And in the selection that says automatic updates, we want to click on only update this game when I launch it. And then close the window. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, uh, aren't, we launching, aren't we launching Skyrim every time we start Skyrim? Wouldn't it just automatically update anyway? Uh, yes, if you launch Skyrim through Steam. But when this guide is completed and everything is said and done, we're actually going to be launching Skyrim through Mod Organizer. Okay, now let's configure Skyrim so it plays nice with uh, our chosen ENB and among other graphical tweaks that we are going to implement. So let's go ahead and launch it through Steam. Go ahead and just click OK and OK. We're going to hit Options and then we're going to hit the Ultra button. We're going to make sure we're using aspect ratio that fits our monitor. Uh, my monitor is a 16 by 9 widescreen and the resolution my monitor uses is uh, 2560 by 1440. Uh, we're going to turn anti-aliasing off because the ENB is going to handle all anti-aliasing for us. Make sure that windowed mode is not checked and then hit OK. And then exit. All right, the next step, the creation kit. The creation kit is important for us because we are going to use this to convert Skyrim Legendary Edition mods to work well with uh, Skyrim Special Edition. So, in order to do this, you're going to have to install the Bethesda.net launcher, and uh, if you don't have an account, you're going to have to create an account. So, let's install the Bethesda.net launcher. Click download. Right here, download for free. Save the file. Once it's finished uh, downloading, go ahead and uh, install it. Okay, when you uh, launch the launcher, uh, we're gonna wanna find the creation kit for Skyrim. So we're gonna click up here under all games, then scroll right down here and it says creation kit, and then we're gonna install it. It'll automatically find a directory you installed Skyrim Special Edition into. Don't worry about any shortcuts, just click install. After it's installed, we're going to go ahead and click play. You're going to get this window that says that the script source zip, scripts.zip, is new and has been updated. Do you want to unpack it? Yes, we do. And depending on uh, what kind of process you have, how many cores, etc., etc., this may take a while. So just be patient. When it's done unpacking, uh, Creation Kit should automatically load. Wait till it completely fully loads and then go ahead and exit out of that. Excellent. We could uh, close out the launcher now. Uh, next up we're gonna do is we're gonna download the pre-made creation kit custom.ini file. What this does, it sets up the creation kit to allow multiple masters and properly load DLC content. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. All 
Alright, this step is very simple, especially since you created that shortcut to your common folder in Steam. You did, right? Of course you did, you magnificent beast. To install this, we just drag uh, the custom.ini file into Skyrim Special Edition. Next up, we're going to install the Special Edition Creation Kit fixes, various patches and bug fixes for the Creation Kit to make life easier. Okay, it's under Files tab here. Then we're going to manually download Release 3.1. Go ahead and save it. And you install this the same way. Just drag all this into Skyrim Special Edition. Easy peasy. All right, in the next video, we're gonna install the tools. The tools of the trade, as they say. I'll see you in the next one.